What's going on, guys? Here we are on a wonderful Sunday evening. Uh, a long weekend at drill playing uh, Army Boy, but um, I am back and in some regular clothes again and here for our Solution Sunday. So we got a lot going on um, during the holidays, a lot of clients that are having similar issues. So I thought putting out um, some of our good solutions would be a great way to help y'all. Um, as you might see these issues in your neighborhoods with your um, neighbors, with yourselves, if you hear anything that's going on, let me know. Um, something crazier than what I may mention um, that you think is helpful, I would love to get your feedback on that. Um, but also, when I'm talking while I'm talking about residential, um, don't forget that a lot of this is applicable to your workspace as well. Um, lots of cars in one central location when you park at work. So there's a huge possibility um, that cars could be broken into uh, while you're at work in your parking deck or in your parking lot, um, especially this holiday season because there's just so much more of an uptick of those types of crimes. Uh, so to recap, our what if Wednesday question was what if somebody breaks into your car this holiday season? Um, what's important to think about during this, um, it's more about proactive what can you do before you actually have somebody break into your car once somebody breaks into your car you know the key is to leave it be uh, go ahead and get the police out there let them do whatever fingerprinting may be possible um, a lot of people rely on that but in reality fingerprinting on a vehicle um, especially this time of the year where there's lots of frost and different issues like uh, inclement weather like that um, fingerprints aren't really something that's going to going to happen it's not really going to work uh, they may pull them and tell you yeah we're going to get them to you but uh, realistically there's nothing's going to be found the best bet is if you do leave something in the car and it gets stolen there's a serial number attached to it and if they have a serial number attached to it that's when uh, if they go to pawn it it'll actually pop up in the pawn system um, you'll be able to retrieve it that way but that also means you have to notate and log um, photos and serial numbers for all your electronics items, serialized items. So weapons, you should have that, um, laptop, cell phone, so on and so forth. That way they can trace it back to, yes, this is actually yours and you're not just claiming that you lost 18 iPhones. Um, one thing that, um, or shifting over to proactive and what you need to be doing before something like this occurs. Um, if you remember, I put up a video and some photos a month or two ago about the upgrades we made around our house um, and the things that we did to um, add lighting to it. Um, if you remember, I did the, um, the split photo of before and after the lighting where I had Heather standing on the front of the house um, where it was really dark. You couldn't see her. Then I installed all the lighting around the house and took another photo and it's very obvious where she's standing because obviously she's lit up now. Well, that's going to be huge for deterring um, anybody from messing with your car. Um, what we did in the driveway, if you remember, we have the motion sensor light and a camera on the driveway. Um, so if you go anywhere near our vehicles, the light's going to click on, which alerts us because it's uh, pretty near to where our bedroom window is. Um, and then the camera is obviously recording as well. So those are going to be two very key things. Um, I think the most obvious and, you know, if you've done this, then, you know, don't take offense and just realize that um, it happens way too often. Don't leave purses, bags, electronics, weapons in the car, um, especially overnight, especially in a parking deck where there's not really any type of security. Um, that's really going to be the most key is don't present the opportunity. Most most of those are going to be crimes of opportunities where they're going around, they're checking the door handle. Is the car unlocked? A lot of times they're not breaking windows, but if they do break a window, um, a car break in, it takes like 15 seconds to break in your car, reach in, grab a bag or two out, trifle through the center console and the glove box, and then they're gone. So it doesn't take any time whatsoever. Um, so just don't give them the opportunity. Lock the vehicle. Make sure it's locked and don't leave anything in, in plain sight. If you do want to leave your like briefcase, backpack, whatever in the car, throw it in the trunk where it's not obvious. Or if you have a truck, 
um, that has like a securable lid, like my Tacoma has the lid on it and I can lock the tailgate and it's essentially secured. Um, you can throw it in that area or, you know, cover it up in the floorboard, you know, tint your windows, do something where it's just not obvious you have um, something just sitting there easy for the taking. Um, so that's lighting, cameras, so um, especially if they're in obvious locations where they see that they're being recorded, um, not presenting a good opportunity. Um, another really, really big thing in this area, and I was talking about it with the HOA and what we do, um, have a community watch that's established. Know who your neighbors are. Know who should be walking through the yard, shouldn't be walking through the yard. Let's be realistic. If somebody's walking their dog at night, they could be walking through the yard. Um, so depending on what's up, Bussy, um, depending on how your yard set up, how long your driveway is, they might be walking somewhere near your car, um, especially in an apartment complex is you just have no clue who's going to be. But it really helps to know your neighbors and know if they're uh, supposed to be there or if, even if you just happen to see them on a regular basis, you know, they belong there compared to this guy's walking through cars and i don't know who the heck this guy is uh, i miss you too man i um, definitely been long too long of a time man um so that's another good thing um attached to that um the community watch it's gonna uh, another big thing is actually assigning different people in the community to do like patrols where they're walking the guy that walks the dog every night is the perfect guy to walk in notate see what's going on um, observe and report type situation, which is what we're doing with that HOA. Um, we're essentially establishing a routine of if you see something, say something, call the police, get somebody going. Um, I think they're going to end up hiring a security guard um, company. Uh, we're going to bring in, we refer them to somebody that we really like, and um, they're going to be a visual presence where you can see the security guard. So that way, they're the ones that are going to be up overnight observing and reporting. So that would help as well if, if you have an HOA that's willing to do that. Um, you can hire law enforcement. They're obviously going to be more expensive on an hourly basis, but you can still hire cops to sit and patrol your neighborhood. They love those type of extra jobs. Um, you can hire the unarmed. You can hire armed. Um, and you, there's several options. You just have to think about it, think outside the box, and figure out what your HOA is willing to do. Um, so just a quick, quick recap. Don't present a good opportunity. Be aware of people in and around your vehicle. Um, make it to where you have good sight lines to your vehicle. Um, we talked about lighting. We talked about cameras. Another big one is don't have a bunch of bushes around entry points and your vehicles where somebody can hide. So as you pull into the garage or the driveway, they can be hiding behind the bush, jump out, and before you ever lock the vehicle, you're in danger, and now your stuff's getting taken, your car's getting stolen, so on and so forth. Um, so some really good tips. Um, definitely think about that. If you, if I missed anything that y'all think um, or y'all have implemented that has worked really, really well, um, give me a shout out in the messages. We'll go through and talk about that as well. Um, hopefully y'all had a great weekend like I did, and I will talk to y'all Wednesday for our next scenario. Y'all have a great week.